It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change your attitude, change your life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. With an overabundance of supplements and so-called miracle pills on the market, it's difficult to make sense of the information and claims and to discern what really contributes to our health and well-being. What's good for us today is said to be bad for us tomorrow, so how do we separate the truth from the hype? Today's guest, Dr. Tironi Lodog, is an internationally recognized health expert and integrative medicine physician. She's here to take some of the mystery out of the confusing world of supplements and to offer a personalized guide through the supplement aisle. Dr. Lodog is the author of the new book, Fortify Your Life, Your Guide to Vitamins, Minerals, and More. She's also the author of Healthy at Home and Life is Your Best Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Lodog. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Dr. Lodog, as I said in the introduction, Vitamins and supplements, what we should and shouldn't be taking is such a confusing topic because we're constantly bombarded by mixed messages. One day we're told something's good for us and the next it's not. So with more than 30,000 dietary supplements in the marketplace and new studies coming out every day, what should we consider when evaluating which vitamins, minerals, or supplements are right for us? You know, it's a complex question and it doesn't have an easy answer which is why I wrote a whole book on it. I mean I wished it was so much more simple that we could just give the information very quickly but the reality is that it is difficult to determine which supplements may be useful, which ones aren't worth your money and which ones actually may be harmful to you. And so I I think it's also important to separate out a category, the category of vitamins and minerals from the larger category of dietary supplements, which includes all kinds of of nutraceuticals and herbals and things. Vitamins and minerals are what I focus extensively on in the book because these are the substances that your body needs for it to be able to function properly. If you have a deficiency in any vitamin and mineral or mineral, you'll have symptoms develop and disease will occur. So vitamins and minerals are things that you must get in your diet. You can't make them in your body. Vitamins and minerals, you would think that in living in modern times with grocery stores available, you know, and food readily accessible, that we would be getting all of the nutrients that we need. Clearly, that is not the case. According to the Centers for Disease Control, through doing blood sampling and urine sampling across the nation in both genders, all age groups, across races and ethnicities, we have found 90 million Americans have low vitamin D. 30 million Americans are frankly deficient in vitamin B6. 18 million are deficient in B12. 16 million Americans are deficient in vitamin C, putting them at risk for scurvy. 16% of African American women are deficient in iron. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And so what I would tell you is the clear evidence is that most people, most of us, would benefit from taking a low-potency, very basic multivitamin and mineral. People who live more north, you know, north of Denver, if you drew a line across the United States, and particularly people who have dark skin, they should consider taking supplemental vitamin D beyond what's in their multivitamin and multiple mineral. Um, And if they're taking certain medications, I put a whole table in the back of the book that goes over what medications can rob you of certain nutrients because they either impair their absorption, enhance their excretion, or somehow affect their bioavailability. Now, Doctor, listening to those statistics, I mean, that's quite alarming. And and I would assume that that 
Part of that is the result of our diet today. I mean, people that are just eating processed foods and, and refined sugars and things that just aren't serving us well. But then there's that part of the population that is really trying to eat well, and still they are having the same deficiencies. What is the, the cause of that? Is it the way our food is produced? Well, I think, I think you're right. I do think that food production has changed the quality of, of our of our produce and our grains. Research from the 1950s, comparing it to research in 2000s and in 2010, show that our produce, that the most common vegetable and fruit crops actually are less nutritious today than they were in the 1950s. Now that is surprising, meaning the orange you eat today is not as healthy as the orange your grandmother ate in 1950. But this is also alarming because not only do we need to be eating somewhere around, you know, seven cups of vegetables and fruits per day. Right. But even when we're getting the fruits and vegetables, they're not as nutritious as they once were. We also now are exposed to far more insecticides and herbicides in our food, which also increases the demand that we need for vitamin C, vitamin E, et cetera, for our body to be able to actually deal with those chemicals in a way so that they don't harm us. So processing foods, uh, we eat a lot of processed foods. I, I, I've never understood why we call it refined foods. Uh, I mean, it's stripped food. Refined flour is when you have stripped the wheat of everything nutritious in it, and now you've taken a bunch of synthetic vitamins and tried to put it back in. I think it's a misnomer to call these things refined. So I would agree with you. I think there's many things in the way we process our food and the way we grow our food, which has changed its nutritional profile. Doctor, something I, I found to be very interesting was that nutritional deficits in children can impact behavior, attention, and, and, and even their intelligence. So should this be an area that is considered first before putting a child on medication? Have you ever seen a diagnosis reversed once dietary changes were made? Well, I have. I mean, and it depends upon the severity of the problem and what we're seeing. Um, but definitely children, some children are sensitive to certain things in foods. So an elimination diet can often be beneficial. You know, I can't count the number of kids who I've seen who, you know, it's their 15th time they've had an ear infection. You know, it's their 10th round of antibiotics by the time they're four and you take them off dairy products and no more ear infection. So sometimes things in the diet um, can impact a child's health and well-being. When it comes to behavior, there are also some things in foods that can impact them. But my concerns are things like iron, which is fundamental. Iron is absolutely fundamental for a child's mental and physical development. And the CDC found that roughly, you know, more than one in 10 Mexican-American children, so Hispanic children, more than one in 10 have very low iron. So when I look at that, and I, you know, I live in New Mexico, so I live in a state with, with many, you know, Mexican-American children. And I'm thinking about the three-year-old who's now low in iron who is not going to be able to grasp new ideas, concepts, not going to be able to retain, have good retention of memory of, of new learning. And I think, what is the resistance to putting this child on a very basic children's multiple vitamin mineral? You know, Doctor, that's the one thing that I don't understand. I mean, without offering advice, to me, it just makes common sense for, for what you're saying with children, but also for adults with things like heart disease and brain and bone health. Why would you want to start taking a pharmaceutical before you've looked at something more natural like your food and vitamins and supplements and minerals? It just it just makes common sense to me. Well, my grandma used to say that common sense was the least common of all. But anyway, <laughs> um, of our senses. But um, but but you. You raise a point, you know, it's why I've always been attracted to integrative medicine because integrative medicine is just conventional, traditional medicine plus. <laughs> it, it, it means we do all the things that we normally do in medicine, but we also uh, are thoughtful about nutrition, exercise, uh, mind-body practices, um, uh, you know, managing our stress, helping people get sleep. And, and, a, and a classic example of this was a very large diabetes study that was done. It was a very big study, uh, multi-year and what they found was that actually lifestyle was more effective at managing diabetes than the drug metformin, glucophage, which is commonly prescribed. Now, it doesn't mean that metformin isn't valuable or useful. What it does mean is that wouldn't most of us prefer to actually use our diet and our lifestyle to be able to treat our health? 
before having to take a drug and saving the drugs for when they're really necessary. Absolutely. And medications are necessary for many people at particular times in their life. But if you could do something that has no side effects and generally has other health benefits, people who manage their weight, exercise, and eat a healthy diet and take a basic multivitamin for that matter, when you look at those things, they actually not only feel physically better but emotionally and mentally better as well. So why would you not start there before going to things which, while having benefit for our health, also come with significant side effects. The book is Fortify Your Life, Your Guide to Vitamins, Minerals, and More. If you would like to learn more about this topic or Dr. Lodog, you can visit her website, drlodog.com. Doctor, in our final moments, what would you like to leave our listeners with? I would just like to say that, um, you know, today the the information is confusing. Don't, don't let it get too confusing for you. The same truths that have always been true still are, you know? It means uh, get enough sleep each night, uh, try to find healthy ways to cope and manage with your stress. Every day, find things that you're grateful for. Remember your food should be as close to nature as possible, meaning that you've mucked around with it as little as possible. Move your body every day, it was meant to move. Um, and, and consider things like basic supplements to fill in any gaps that may be there. But if you do those kinds of things, I promise you, you've already gone 90% of the way to improving your life and, and, and living the life that you really want to have. Dr. Lodok, thank you so much for being here with us today. Again, if you would like to learn more about Dr. Lodog and her work, you can visit drlodog.com. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.